good morning one and all take down this problem today they are going to solve economic load dispatch for two generating units take down this problem the incremental fuel cost of plant 1 and 2 are given as f1 is equal to 0 0.1 p1 square plus 40 p1 plus 120 rupees per hour f2 is equal to 0 0.25 p2 square plus 30 p2 plus 150 rupees per hour Determine the economics operating operating schedule and corresponding cost of generation if the maximum and minimum loading on each unit is 100 megawatt and 25 megawatt. So minimum and maximum operating limits are given that is 25 megawatt to 100 megawatt and demand also they have given as 180 megawatt and transmission loss are neglected. If the load is equally shared by the both the units determine the savings obtained by the loading savings obtained uh, by loading the units as as per the in, uh, equal increment incremental products and cost that is given in the problem this is the data given in the problem from the data what is the demand demand is clearly given as 180 megawatt minimum and maximum operating limits also given that is 25 megawatt less than or equal to PGA less than or equal to 100 megawatt. As I said before, whatever the problem is given, if you are uh, going to solve with the lambda iteration method, first you need to mark A1, B1, C1, A2, B2 and C2 given in the problem. That is fuel uh, fuel cost, increment of fuel cost given in the problem. That is F1 and F2. So you, you first you mark this A1, B1, C1 and A2, B2, C2. What is the first step in the lambda iteration method? Calculate lambda. Lambda is equal to PD plus summation I is equal to 1 to N. PI divided by 2A. The whole divided by summation I is equal to 1 to N. 1 divided by 2A I. So what is the demand given in the problem? 180 plus B1 divided by 2A1 plus B2 divided by 2A2. Similarly, 1 divided by 2A1 plus 1 divided by 2A2. Already you marked what is A1, B1, C1. So general formulation you know. A, 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 I, P, G, I, P, P, I uh, square plus um, B, I, P, I plus C, M. That is the general formulation. So from this, you just substitute all this A, A, B, A, B1, um, B2, A, A1 and A2. If you substitute and you solve with your scientific calculator, you are we are getting the lambda value as 62.857. This is the lambda value. We are given. Next step number two, we need to calculate PGA. PGA is equal to lambda minus BA divided by 2AI. So what is the lambda? 62.8571 minus this values you need to substitute. B1 divided by 2A1. After substituting the values, we are getting the answer as 114.2855 mega. Next step, uh, PG2 we need to calculate. PG2 is similarly lambda minus B2 divided by 2A2. Just to substitute all the values, and we are getting the PG2 as 65.7142 megawatt. Uh, that is PG1 plus PG2 is equal to PD. That is, uh, we are getting it as 179.99997 megawatt. As I said before, after decimal, four digits you need to take. That is approximately equal to 180 megawatt. So demand uh, also sets. So you need to write the conclusion PG1 and PG2 satisfies the load demand. And what is the minimum and maximum operating limits for both the units? They have given as 25 megawatt less than or equal to PG1, comma PG2 less than or equal to uh, 100 megawatt. So both units should be within this 25 megawatt and 100 megawatt. So I think uh, PG1 violates violates the maximum operating limits, but PG2 satisfies within the limit. So you need to write the conclusion as the power generating unit PG2 satisfies the demand and also within the minimum uh, minimum and maximum operating limit but pg1 violates the upper operating limits or maximum operating limits so it is violating the upper operating limits or maximum because it is violating 100 megawatt so 114 is there na? so it is violating the 100 megawatt so it is the upper operating limits or maximum operating limits so we are assuming pg1 to its maximum operating limits that is the rule that is already we have seen the algorithm that algorithm also I will give in the description. You will just watch once. So this PG1 is equal to 100 megawatts. That we need to consider PG1 to its uh, 
we need to assume first. First, we need to assume PG1 has to uh, to the maximum operating limits, that is 100 megawatts, to its maximum loading limits or maximum operating limits. Now, uh, what is the optimality condition? Optimality condition, three optimality condition already we derived. That also I will um, give the previous uh, um, optimality condition derivation also in the description. That also you watch. That is the, which condition it falls uh, means DFI divided by DPA. DPGA is less than or equal to lambda for PGA is equal to PGA maximum. Why? Because we have considered PGA is equal to PGA maximum. That is 100 megawatts. So this condition uh, only it should satisfy. This optimality condition only it should satisfy. So while taking PG1 as 100 megawatt, we need to differentiate. That is this condition we need to settle. That is DF1 divided by DPG1 is equal to by taking PG1 is equal to 100 megawatt. We need to substitute. Uh, we need to differentiate first. The fuel cost function is given. Just we need to differentiate. Differentiation. Um, where is the cost from the uh, fuel cost function? F1 is equal to 0.1 P1 squared plus 40 P1 plus 120. So if you differentiate it, so 2 into 0.1 will come plus this will go because uh, this will give it becomes 1. So 40 only will come. So here uh, this. Uh, DEF1 divided by DPG1 is equal to 0 0.2 into uh, PG1 plus 40. Uh, so uh, by substituting PG1 as 100 megawatt, uh, we are getting the uh, uh, DEF1 divided by DPG1 is equal to 60. That is less than 62.8571. What is uh, 62.8571 is lambda. Lambda value already we calculated before. That value, yeah, 62.857. So it is less than. So this condition satisfies. So henceforth, now only we are confirming PG1 as 100 megawatt. Previously, we just assumed, we just considered PG1 to its maximum operating limits. After that, you need to satisfy this optimality condition. If this optimality condition satisfies only, we need to consider PG1 as 100 megawatt. So if you, uh, PG1 as 100 megawatt, Next, what is PG2? PG2 is, I think, uh, 80 megawatt because um, demand is 180 megawatt. That is the shortcut. But as um, as per the algorithm, how to calculate PD new? So you need to calculate PG2. Um, PG2 you need to calculate. So we can calculate PD new is equal to PD old minus sum of fixed generation not satisfying the optimality limits. So what is not satisfying? Yeah, 100 megawatt only not satisfying. So PD old is 180. Minus 100 is 80 megawatt. So PD nu is equal to 80 megawatt. Now we need to calculate lambda nu. Lambda nu is equal to PD nu plus summation i is equal to 1 to n. VI divided by 2A. The whole divided by summation i is equal to 1 to n. 1 divided by 2A i. This is from the algorithm we already we have seen. Just we need to substitute only uh, two values. Mm, generate, generate two values only because already we calculated PG1 value. So only two values only we need to generate two values only we need to substitute. So B2 divided by 2A2 divided by the whole divided by 1 divided by 2A2. That values alone we need to substitute. So we are getting lambda nu as 70, 70 we are getting. So now PG2 nu is equal to lambda nu minus BI divided by 2AI. That is B2 divided by 2A2. So lambda nu 70 minus the, those values you need to substitute. So minus 30 divided by 2 into 0. Point uh, so if you take your scientific calculate, calculate it, you will get the answer as 80 megawatt. This is the actual procedure for calculating PG2 uh, nu, uh, that is 80 megawatt become. This is the actual procedure. Whatever we calculate is the actual procedure that is by from the lambda iteration algorithm already we have seen before. That uh, uh, video I will give in the, in the description. But uh, for time concern, you can skip this step. So if it is asked in a five mark question, you can skip this step and directly you can time concern because PG1 is um, 100 megawatt, no? So definitely PG2 might be 80 megawatt because uh, demand is 180 megawatt. So easily you can calculate uh, like PD is equal to PG1 plus PG2. So PG2, uh, PG1 is uh, 100 means uh, obviously PG2 is uh, PD minus PG1. So um, PD minus PG1 is 180 minus 100 is 80 mega. So PG2 is 80 mega. If it is asked in 5 mark question, then you need to solve like this. If it is asked in 10 mark question, you need to follow the algorithm clearly as per the uh, we solved the previous thing. So easily uh, we, we are calculating PG2 as 80 
uh, megawatt. Now we need to check whether it is in limit or not. So demand also satisfies that we know. So the limit or not, that also you, you need to check because minimum and maximum operating limits are given in the problem. That is 25 megawatt less than or equal to PG. I that is PG1 comma PG2 less than or equal to 100 megawatt. Now the power generating units PG1 and PG2 satisfies the demand and also it satisfies the minimum and maximum operating limits. It is there in the limits. Now what is the mm, two? What is uh, the second part they asked in the problem means uh, they asked to determine the savings obtained. Yeah, second but determine the savings obtained by loading uh, the uh, units as per the uh, as per equal incremental products and the cost. So uh, we need to um, calculate the savings obtained from these values. That is PG1 uh, is equal to 100 megawatt, PG2 is equal to 80 megawatt. From these values, we need to uh, calculate the uh, savings obtained. But uh, that is a specific uh, um, thing given in the problem. The load is equally shared by both the units. Equally load is equally shared by the both the units. That is the condition given in the problem clearly. So we need to take PG1 as 90 megawatt and PG2 as um, 90 megawatt because 180 megawatt, so equally shared means divided by two. So 180 megawatt divided by two is 90 megawatt and 90 megawatt. So PG1 is 90 megawatt and PG2 as 90 megawatt. Now what we need to do is we need to uh, find out the cost, fuel cost. So F1 is equal to already um, the problem uh, that uh, function is given 0 0.1 into this uh, uh, square that that is a uh, uh, PG1 square plus 40 into PG1 plus 120 like that given. So PG1 you need to substitute here. That is 90, 90 square. So here also 90. That is rupees per hour. You take your scientific calculator, calculate it. You, you need to multiply and uh, add all these things. You'll get the fuel cost as 4530 rupees per ha. Next, similarly, you need to calculate F2, that is fuel cost 2. That is um, this, this is given in the problem, that is 0 0.25 uh, PG2 squared plus 30 into PG2 plus 150 rupees per ha. That is asked in the problem. Similarly, you have you, you take your scientific calculator, you, you can easily calculate F2 also, that is 4875 rupees per ha. You need to tell whether you are getting the same answer or not. Now, total fuel cost. What is the total fuel cost? Ft is equal to F1 plus F2. So this you need to um, plus, uh, okay, add. That is 4530 plus 4875. So total fuel cost to, uh, is uh, 9405 rupees per half. Now, by taking the uh, economic load the special value, so whatever the answer we got now in the uh, first, uh, yeah, from by taking this the economic load as well, no? PG1 is equal to 100 megawatt. PG2 is equal to 80 megawatt. Now, from the economic load dispatch, PG1 is equal to 100 megawatt and PG2 is equal to 80 megawatt. Similarly, you need to calculate the uh, total fuel cost, that is total save. So, F1 is equal to the same thing, same equation. You need to substitute PG1 as 100 megawatt here. Uh, while taking 100 megawatt here, we are getting the fuel cost 1 as uh, 5120 rupees per hour. Similarly, the fuel cost 2 by taking PG2 as 80 megawatts. So you need to substitute 80 megawatt here. So similarly, after substituting 80 megawatt here, we are getting the answer as fuel cost uh, function 2 as 4150 rupees per hour. So what is the total fuel cost? You need to add this to fuel cost. That is total fuel cost is equal to F1 plus F2. That is 5120 plus 4150. We are getting the total fuel cost as 9270 rupees per hour. So what is the savings obtained? That you need to calculate. So savings obtained, this fuel cost, this total fuel cost, that is uh, by equal sharing, what is the uh, that fuel cost? That fuel cost we got, no? This fuel cost plus whatever the economic load dispatch, that fuel cost also you need to calculate. That fuel cost you need to minus. So savings obtained is 135 uh, rupees per hour. So obviously economic load dispatch fuel cost only will be lesser because we are um, optimizing the um, generators. So optimal generators only we are uh, selecting. So obviously fuel cost is less for the economic load dispatch value. So here we are getting 9270 um, while taking with the economic load dispatch value. So the savings obtained is 135 rupees per hour. So as I said, uh, rupees per hour, dollar per hour, euros per hour, whatever it is given in the problem, you need to solve. 
uh, you need to just to take what is the currency given in the problem. Sometimes dollars also they may ask because universally dollars uh, is followed. No? Sometimes they will ask like that also. The savings obtained, you need to highlight. Hi you need to highlight the answer. The savings obtained is this, and all the answers you need to highlight like this, uh, so that uh, uh, it will be easy for the validators to give the 